Hey friends, it's Missy again. Thanks so much for stopping by today. I have a new layout to share for the Paige Evans design team and I'm going to be using her Go the Scenic Route collection. Primarily this gorgeous paper that I've been hoarding for a long time. It's paper number 11 and it speaks for itself. I mean, look at the gorgeousness that is this paper. So I stared at it for quite a while before finally hacking into it and what I decided to do was cut out some of these little diamond shapes and use those to create some sort of background design element on my background and yeah I just spent some time cutting these out pretty easy easy shape to cut so it didn't take that long but once again I'm going to use all the colors because I cannot narrow it down so we're going with all the colors again and I have a couple photos here I'm not sure which one one's vertical one's horizontal but they're both selfies of me and my youngest daughter so um, I put both of those aside and thought let me just go ahead and get my background prepped I'm gonna use thick smooth white cardstock that's the basil marshmallow that's my go-to background when I'm using white and I'm using Finnebear Art Basics Clear Gesso because I'm going to do lots of mixed media on the background. But before I add anything to the background, I first want to decide, first of all, which photo I'm going to use and where it's going to go and then how I'm going to arrange all of these diamond shapes. Uh, I do decide to use the horizontal photo mainly because of the direction that my daughter is looking. She's looking up and to the right. So I thought it would be perfect to arrange all of the diamonds to where it looks like she is looking up and across at the diamonds. I love when I have photos like this that I can kind of situate to where it looks like the person is looking at something on the page. Um, and so that also helps me with the design because since she's looking to the right, that automatically helps me know that I want to put my photo on the left side of the page. And I didn't want to put the photo up high because then she wouldn't have anything to look at. So that tells me I need to bring the photo down a little bit lower. And then I knew right away where to put the diamonds. So a lot of times my photo will dictate where things are going to go. So that's kind of my idea. Now to add color to the background, I'm going to start with Distress Oxides. Haven't used these in a while. Love, love, love these. Um, I start with a darker blue color. I think this is Faded Jeans. And I just, when I use them on a background like this, I just scrape the ink pad right onto the paper and then activate it with water. And then you can see what happens. It basically turns into watercolor and uh, it's awesome. Now, if you're going to do this technique, you definitely want to use gesso because if you were to just scrape this ink pad right onto plain, untreated cardstock, then it's just going to look streaky it's not going to activate with water as well. I mean, a little bit of it might, but you're still going to get that streaky shape of whatever it is when the, the ink pad hits the paper. That's what it's going to look like. It's not going to dissolve into liquid like this. Uh, it would look just like that. And so if you want it to activate with water, definitely use gesso first and let it dry. It's going to make you um, able to do all this running and blending of the colors. The second color that I added there was uh, Peacock Feathers. That was the aqua bluish color. And then I came in with a yellow fossilized amber and I kind of blotted it up the first time. It, it looked a little bit too green because it mixed with the blue and that was okay. You know, I know colors are going to run and blend, but I was not looking to create a green. So and that's, that's another thing about gesso is if you want to dab up something that you just did, you have time to do that because it's not soaking right through onto the background yet. And it's very easy to dab it up. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to do some blues into some yellows and then maybe over to the left where the photo is going to go, I'm going to add in some oranges and some pinks. Uh, so I just have to keep playing with it because I'm not sure, uh, you know, when I make a background, I kind of have an idea of where everything's going to go and then I take everything off, start adding the color, and then I kind of have to bring it back like the photo there and test it and see do I have enough on the background? Have I done too much? Am I covering it all up with the photo and the papers and things? So you just kind of have to keep doing a little, adding a little, then seeing how it looks. Uh, now I'm going to come back over some of these to make the colors a little bit darker. And I have found that when I do this technique, 
the second time I do it because that top dark blue section was not completely dry so when I run the ink pad back over it it doesn't dissolve as well as it does the first time if you see the very top there those little dark spots that's where the ink pad hit the paper and it didn't really um, activate with water as well and I don't know it's like the second time around it, it tends to not work as well so um, you know but I like it I think it, it adds to the texture of the background now what I'm doing is adding in some shimmers I just added in a couple squirts of my favorite which is the vibes Jenny B blue and I'm gonna be mixing in several shimmers here with the distress oxides so I took a little break this is what I got so far and I really like this background now remember all of those diamonds are going to be over all of this so you're going to be able to see this background through and around all of those diamond shapes but I'm not done I don't want to leave the left side completely blank so I'm going to come back with the distress oxides and I'm using a combination of seedless preserves which is that dark pinkish purple color it's so pretty and then under that I added an orange color which is uh, spiced marmalade and if those blended together I was cool with that because I think those those colors look really pretty blended together and I'm going to wind up adding lots of layers here I'm going to mix in some shimmers here in a bit but I, I wanted some pink above the photo and then some orange below the photo so I'm going to pull out another one of my go-to shimmer sprays and that's vibes sweetheart it's one of my favorite pinks I use it very often um, and again I like to mix different types of products together especially when I'm making a background like this I love mixing the distress oxides with the shimmers and I've used my go-to colors from shimmers for so long I just I have I have what they're gonna look like memorized I know exactly what color I need because I've used them for six years now so the more you use them the more you know your products so if you're just getting into mixed media or you want to try it I just highly recommend playing around and discovering which products you like which colors you use a lot and the more you use them the more comfortable you get using them and you just kind of know okay I need this color I know this color is going to work and it matches this perfectly um, yeah so I added a little squirt of another shimmers that is called sunset strip it's kind of a cross between a, a light orange and a yellowish color that's not a very professional way to describe it but <laughs> that's what it looks like so that's the background thus far I'm gonna let that kind of start to dry and then go ahead and work on layering up the photo I'm just gonna add some tissue paper behind it I, I love to do that because it just adds this little messy subtle layer behind the photo and then I'm gonna pop up the photo but also all of the diamonds I don't want those to be flat I want them to have a little bit of dimension so I'm just adding some adhesive foam behind those and then here's what I've got on the background it looks like a crazy weird shape without anything on top of it but I kind of know where everything's gonna go and before I put everything back I'm going to add some splatters using some of the same colors that I used before that was the sweetheart and then I'm using some mustard seed that's the yellow one there that's a different yellow than I used the first time it's a, a good mix of that uh, the yellow distress oxide it's kind of along the same color as that and then back to that Jenny B blue if I was stranded on a deserted island and you asked me which shimmers would I take with me it would be Jenny B blue because that's just the one that I yeah it's my favorite my favorite blue that's for sure all right so I like this I like the subtle splatters I like the messy looking background and you can see the shimmer effect there too very very shimmery so I like how the the, the orange and the pink look behind the photo there and then now I'm going to start to arrange all of the diamonds I don't want them to look ordered uh, I want them to look random uh, some of them are going to overlap because this kind of reminds me of like uh, diamonds in the night or diamonds in the night sky where they're just kind of sparkling not stars but I just felt like these needed to be kind of like they would be if you were you know looking at stars in the sky they're not in a specific order I guess when you you know they could just be anywhere some of them are far apart some of them are close together and so that's what I'm trying to do here I want it to look kind of 
random. And I don't want to remove them again. The background's pretty much done. I like how it looks, so I'm going to start to glue these down. And I'm using Scotch Tacky Glue in my fine liner bottle there. And then we're going to glue the picture down. I'm going to have that pink diamond overlapping the photo. And then I'm going to start, in uh, start to add in some thread. I'm going to add in an orange color kind of underneath the photo. And I decided to use orange there because I don't really have any orange close to the photo. I have that one diamond that's to the right of the pink one. But when I went through all the colors, I felt like orange was the best. I went through all of the ephemera die cuts. I'm going to use just the tail end of this floral tag. I love to use tags as layers behind photos. Um, just And then you can add, you know, cord or tech, um, I was, was going to say texture. No. Um, thread. Hello. Get, the, get your words right. Um, in the hole of the tag to make it look finished. And then I tore into, well, I don't want to say tore into, I cut into paper number 17, which is that paper with all the tickets right there. And because I, you know, I was looking at the design and I thought, I don't really want a big title. I don't want to put a title above the photo. I don't want to put a title on top of all the diamonds. And I don't really have a lot of space below the photo. So I went with a smaller title and I'm going to use this ticket here. That's, it's a, I would call it a light purple. And it says, always a dreamer. And I'm going to go with that. I'm going to ruffle up the edges a little bit with my edge distressor there. And yeah, we're just going to have a small, subtle title for this one. And I like that. You know, sometimes you don't need a big old title. And uh, if it's going to interfere, or not interfere, but if it's going to cover up a bunch of stuff, you know, I just would rather use something smaller. That's just me. I've got some of these puffy phrase thickers that I'm going to use, the little hearts. Uh, the blue ticket says you and me. I'm going to use that as a little layer. And at this point, since I'm going to work on creating a cluster underneath the photo, I want to make sure that I'm representing all the colors that are in the diamonds. So I'm looking for, you know, something orange, something yellow, something pink, and trying to spread it all around. Um, the tag has got a couple colors in it. It's got the navy blue, which is kind of pulling that color over to the left side of the photo. Uh, I'm going through the puffy word stickers here, and I decide to use amazing, mainly because it's all yellow, and I kind of like that it's tone on tone, like it's kind of on the yellow background, so it, it you can read it, but it's not jumping off the page. It's kind of one of those subtle details which sometimes I like. Sometimes I want the details subtle. Sometimes I want them to just, you know, jump right off the page and it's one of the first things that you see. But in this one, I want it to be just kind of subtle and part of the background. Now, I haven't used these yet. I've been using this collection for months and I have yet to use any of these tiny enamel shapes and they're glittery. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. They're so tiny. I mean, look how tiny the package is. I'm going to use a couple of the hearts, some of the circles, just for little pops of color and texture. I wanted something to fill up that space underneath the ticket, but above the word amazing. And so I don't know, a blue one, a pink one, a little teeny tiny orange one, and then a couple of hearts down below. I also use a couple of the cardstock stickers. This pink one at the top says everyday fun. And then the little orange one that I just put down there at the bottom says yes. And again, I, I liked it because it was small and it was orange. And those hearts, look how little that one is. They are so cute. But yeah, I like um, adding clusters. I wanted to make sure that amazing was straight. And then I decided to add in a little bit more thread. And that's, it, it looks black, but it's not black. It's dark blue. Because again, I wanted to pull some of that navy blue over to that side of the page. And so I, I kind of went back and forth. I thought about doing pink, but I felt like there's already enough pink on this layout. I don't know. I was feeling like it was pink, plenty of pink already. And then I took a break and came back and thought, there's too much white on the left. I need to do something. It's too plain. So I thought, what if I added a couple more diamonds and then used the edge of paper seven, no, that's not paper 17, paper 11, kind of underneath the background kind of over to the left kind of like this little pattern peeking around the edge and that's what I decide to do so I'm just gonna hack off a big strip of the background I was nervous to do that but you know what just go for it 
And so I'm going to fill that little strip with this patterned paper. And I think it was the perfect thing to do because I felt like that side of the page was just blah. It was just plain. It needed something. And so that's what we're going to do. So I cut it off, ran it through my edge distressor, and then I'm going to glue. It's the diamond paper, but you would ne never really know because it looks different when it's just peeking around the corner there. I'm going to make sure it's straight because if I don't use my ruler, it will definitely be crooked. And I like that I did this because I feel like it pulls all the colors of the diamonds over to that side of the page. All those colors are represented in that paper or in that section. Maybe not the navy blue, but I don't think you can really, it doesn't, I don't think it takes away from that color. Um, I do add a couple more of the diamonds in a couple spots, which I think helps it a lot also. And so there's still a lot of white space going on, but there's still also interest all over the page now. Um, sometimes I, I like to leave more white space. It just depends, you know, it depends on the layout every time. And sometimes I'm feeling it and then sometimes it just needs something else. And so it was one of those times where it needed something. Uh, I'm going to add in a few more splatters. I'm going to come back in with the same shimmers that I use, the Sweetheart, the, um, that's the Sunset Strip. And then I think I use, oh, I do pull out one I haven't used yet. It's a navy blue shimmers. I'm going to use up at the top and it's called Ahoy Matey. And it's your perfect navy blue. If you're looking for a really good navy blue spray, that's a good one. It's a colorings. And then I'm going to make sure I just dab it up very, very lightly. So I usually just take a napkin or a paper towel and kind of twist the corners until it's nice and thin and I can just stick it right into the um the the splatter or I will take my paper towel roll and just roll it right over it because that won't affect the shape of the splatter all right almost done I'm going to add my journaling and I'm going to use my ruler like always to make sure that my lines are straight and then uh, my favorite go-to pen for journaling most of the time is a black fine tip sharpie when I use black, sometimes I use other colors, but that's the one I use most frequently. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is smudge some Nouveau Glimmer Paste on some of these diamonds because they are diamonds after all, right? So I'm gonna make them glittery. I just stick my finger in there, smudge it on there, voila, you've got glittery sparkles. So I'm gonna show you here. Instant sparkle, yep, gotta love that. They're diamonds, they need to sparkle. But that's the final layout. I really like how this turned out. I love all the colors. I like that I really only used one pattern paper and just a little bit of another one. And I got all the colors in, which of course I love. I don't think I've used this collection yet without using all the colors. I just, I can't do it. I can't do it. I have to use all the colors every time. So, oh man. Yep. Anyway, here's all the details. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, I will see you guys in my next video. I'll make sure to link everything that I used that I can find down below. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so, so much for watching.